folks, fighting games have gotten a lot better over the years at teaching you how to play the game. Tutorials have gotten a lot more in-depth. Games actually teach you stuff like frame data now, but I still think that fighting games struggle in terms of teaching you the fundamentals of how to play the genre. You know, they teach you how to do your special moves, they teach you how to do your combos, but they don't teach you when and how you should be applying those in a real match. So I think one of the best ways to improve at these fundamentals is to watch other people, especially top players, and see what they're doing and learn from them. So today, I think I've found for you a top level match where an extremely massive amount of fighting game fundamentals are displayed in only one game. So the match that we're taking a look at today is Daigo versus Cien. This is from Capcom Pro Tour Asia Finals 2014 in Ultra Street Fighter 4. And we're just watching the very first game. The whole match is really long and it's a really, really great match. So I'll link that down in the description if you want to watch the whole thing. But just in the first game, I have identified over a dozen fighting game fundamental skills that you need to have if you want to be good at this genre especially with street fighter 6 coming out just over three weeks can you believe that well, you guys are going to want to know some of these basics so that you can go out there and get some wins online so what do you say we start things out here it's daigo with evil ryu versus cn with gen and we're going to watch the video through just one time at full speed just to you know soak it all in and see what happens then we'll go through again and i'm going to do a bunch of pausing and pointing out all these little fundamentals, but you know, Daigo looking pretty good so far with the, the knockdown, but nice throw tech from Cian trying to poke with crouching medium punch, but getting pushed into the corner, getting knocked down by the repeated sweeps here, repeated crouching medium punches as well. Daigo's pressure is looking crazy right now. Wake up Ultra though is going to connect. I don't know if you guys remember this Ultra only does gray life. So you can see that's all recoverable life. But Cian lands the throw, so that's going to take away all the gray life. So this is a good outcome for Cian here. And he's got Daigo pushed into the corner. Not a super good position here for the Beast. Yeah, I got a full screen to work with. And there's a nice air-to-air -air jump roundhouse. The red focus lose <laughs> loses to forward roundhouse. Cancelled into EX Tatsu though. That was sick from Daigo. And then the fireball to chip out. No chip kills in Street Fighter 6, but here in uh Street Fighter 4, a chip was very much a factor when you're low on life. So already Daigo has the corner. There's towards medium punch overhead. Standing medium kick poke from just the right range. Cian in a very tough position here. Trade DP combo into another DP. There's the throw tech. Oh, with punish. Crouch strong into the, in the 100 hand slap, but Cian on just a pixel ish. A pixel and change, and this time the Raw Ultra is not going to work out. Daigo hits him with the EXDP to go through it, and that's game one, guys. That's the whole game. So, would you really believe that there's somewhere around 10, 12 ish fighting game fundamentals just in that one game alone? So, I'm going to do my best to point them out to you. And right when we start off here, I want to talk to you about what. I would consider the two main fundamentals of fighting games in general. I think the first place I heard this was from David Serlin on the uh, Street Fighter 2 Anniversary Collection tutorial videos. He talked about the two main fundamentals of Street Fighter, which are controlling space, that's number one, and pressing the advantage, that's number two. So to start out, let's talk about controlling space. And I think one of the most obvious ways to control space is with a fireball, right? So Evil Ryu, fireball, you know, that covers a massive amount of space because, it, you know, it goes full screen. So uh, Evil Ryu is going to be trying to control this huge amount of screen space here with fireball. You can see he's doing a great job of it. But now Gen has gotten in here as Cien and he's going to be pressing the advantage. So when we say pressing the advantage, we basically mean if you're in a positive situation, a situation where your character has the advantage over the opponent, you have to kind of push that and try to get damage out of it and try to continue the situation instead of just like going back to neutral and getting back into a situation where neither player is at the advantage. You should try to get as much damage as possible whenever you're in a positive situation. And Cien here is in a positive situation when he gets this dash. You can see Daigo doesn't press any buttons here, so Cien gets the jab, and now he is plus. I'm not going to talk too much about frame data here, but essentially, when you're at plus frames, you can act before the opponent, which means you're at advantage. So that's 
two things right off the bat controlling space pressing the advantage those are the first two fundamentals and the third one here i'm going to talk about is frame traps so you can see he does stand jab crouch strong and that is actually a frame trap so a frame trap is essentially a situation where if the opponent presses a button they're gonna get interrupted so you can see after the standing jab here if i press buttons i'm gonna get hit so there's a very small gap there like a two frame gap which is not enough time for any of my attacks to come out so i'll get hit by the way i'll point out while i'm here that uh this focus dash into jab is not actually real uh daigo could actually interrupt there if he pressed a button but but right here daigo very respectful he blocks here and then once again he blocks the frame trap attempt so he doesn't bite he doesn't get hit by pressing any buttons there so that's some good awareness there from daigo but i want to talk about the next fundamental here which is poking so when we say poking in fighting games generally we mean using an attack kind of at the tip of its range that's kind of what we're looking for we're we're hitting the opponent with an attack from as far away as that attack can possibly be used so you know we have daigo here poking with standing medium kick very solid poke for evil ryu and then we have Sian poking with crouching medium punch you can see these normals not quite interacting daigo poking with crouching medium kick into fireball and then poking with fireball as well fireball can be a very strong poke if you use it from close range where it's unreactable but once again cn is going to get this focus attack level one into the dash up and this time daigo's ready he steals his turn back with a jab because he does know like i showed you it's not actually gen's turn in that situation so daigo pulls out the jab here and he does what is our next fundamental i want to talk about which is a tick throw Tick throw is really simple. It just means doing any attack and then throwing the opponent right after they recover from it. So you can tick throw with a jump in, that totally works, or you can tick throw uh, with buttons or whatever. So tick throw, good way to mix up the opponent, catch them off guard. So he gets the throw there with the tick throw. And then what's he doing here? He's pressing his advantage, guys. Let me just rub it in more. A throw is a really good opportunity to press your advantage when you get the knockdown, especially in games like Street Fighter V and VI. You see people doing throw loops and stuff where they throw the opponent, and then the opponent has to guess when they're waking up whether they're going to get thrown again. So press the advantage. That's exactly what he's doing here. He does the jab, and then look at that. Cien backdashes and then gets hit by the sweep. This is our next little piece of tech here. I don't know if I would call this actually a fundamental because this is pretty high level, but this is an option select, guys. So an option select means you do one set of inputs and then depending on what the opponent does, you can get multiple outcomes. So watch what happens here if I block. If I block, he gets jab into medium punch, which is pretty good, it's a frame trap. And you know, he can start whatever pressure he wants after this. But what happens if I back down? To get away from that jab let's check it out look i got swept and you can see this is a dummy recording so he's doing the same inputs no matter what but you can see if i backdash here a sweep comes out so again this is a pretty high level technique but essentially what he's doing is he's hiding the heavy kick input during the screen freeze if the jab connects I know it's a little bit complicated. You don't really need this as a new player, but you should definitely know that option selects exist, especially when Street Fighter VI comes out. We don't know what all option selects are gonna be in the game, but it is a very useful concept to know and uh, especially to recognize when your opponent is using them on you so that you can have stuff ready to deal with it. All right, moving on. So he gets the knockdown. Once again, he's pressing his advantage. He goes for another tick throw. Cian techs it this time. Good throw tech. Oof! Okay, did you see that? That's another fundamental right there that I want to talk about. That's called a whiff punish, guys. A whiff punish is so important in Street Fighter. He whiffs the crouching heavy kick. That's what we call it when an attack misses the opponent. We call that a whiff. And then there's the punish with crouching medium punch. He probably tried to go into Gen's 100 hand slap attack here, but doesn't get the input. But regardless, that is a whiff punish. An important part of footsies. Something you need to know if you react and see those slow attacks that the opponent sticks out. So whiff punish is super important. Now he's uh, controlling space and pressing his advantage really because he's got Sienna in the corner. When your back is in the corner, your options are greatly limited. So this is another type of advantage that you can create in the match. By cornering the opponent, that is a huge advantage for you to take 
here, so he's pressuring him with crouching medium punches. Again, pressing the advantage by going for the jump in and then using the frame advantage on crouching medium punch to really apply pressure here. And then he gets that huge walk up throw. He's got another knockdown, but guess what? If the opponent is pressing advantage on you, you might want to try to use a reversal to get out. So that's our next fundamental is reversals. So if you're really annoyed that, you know, the opponent basically has you in like this forever blocking situation and you're getting frustrated that you don't know how to get out. You're just stuck sitting there while the opponent does their thing. Uh, a reversal is a good way to get out. So a reversal is going to be an invincible move that you can use either on wake up or uh, on block. So you can see here I can use my EX up kicks as a reversal, that's invincible. Or I can use, you know, stuff like Super and Ultra as well. Those are gonna be invincible. So in Street Fighter 6, EX Dragon Punches are invincible reversals, as are a lot of supers. So again, you can do that on Wake Up or you can do it on Block. So here's an example. I can go right through his crouching medium punch with my EX up kicks, my EX uppercut plus kick will get me right through. So uh, reversals, they are punishable if blocked. That's gonna come up later, but they're a good way to get out of the opponent's pressure. All right, so if my, if my count is correct here, we're, we're up to eight fundamental pieces of fighting game knowledge already, but let's keep going. So Santa's empty jump throw there, and here, a nice cross up. That's another important fundamental, guys. That is another way to press your advantage. Most characters in Street Fighter have a cross up, but not all. So if you can knock the opponent down and then you can go for a jumping attack that hits them on the back, they have to switch the direction they guard. So just to show you, I'll let the dummy do this to me here. So I'll hold back on wake up to block and you can see I get hit because back becomes forward because we switch sides. So to block this, you have to switch the direction you block and you actually have to block forward. So this time I will block forward. And there you can see I successfully blocked the cross up. So cross ups are especially effective against new players because they're not going to see it coming. Experienced players are going to be pretty good at blocking them, but there are additional ways to make it trickier. Like if your character has a dive kick, it can be very confusing whether they're going to hit on the front or the back or other ways to alter their sort of air trajectory. Like if they have a hurricane kick or something they can do in the air, you can make your cross ups even more tricky that way. But cross ups are a super good way to press the advantage when you have a knock down. And the other nice thing about this is, you know, after the cross up, even if they block it, you're still in an advantageous situation because you land and you can act quickly. So this is a really great way to press your advantage. Like I said, that's one of the two main fundamentals, controlling space and pressing advantage. I really want to hammer that home for you guys. Make sure to look out for those situations. All right, let's keep moving on here. So Sian poking with crouching medium punch there. We love to see the pokes. Neutral jumping the fireball, but you know, Evil Ryu controlling space really well here. Huge walk up and then, check this out, the air to air jump roundhouse. I think he could have comboed off this. I know for sure Gen can go into like super and ultra off this, but uh, CN didn't have a uh, super ultra meter. So maybe there's nothing he could have comboed with there, but regardless, hitting the opponent out of the air in Street Fighter is so essential because in most Street Fighter games, including Street Fighter 4 and Street Fighter 6, you cannot block in the air. So if you jump, you're opening yourself up to being anti-aired, whether it's from the ground or with what we call an air-to-air -air when you jump up to hit the opponent out of the air. So this is a super essential skill, especially at low levels because everyone just jumps all the time. So make sure your anti-airs are on point. Let's continue here. So he gets the knockdown with that anti-air. He goes for the red focus and gets... It gets focus breaker. That is so crazy from Daigo. That, that, is, that is one of the all time Daigo skills there is getting those focus breaks, but let's move on. Ooh, Daigo gets the FADC into the full combo and he just displayed a really important fundamental, which is hit confirming. So Daigo, he did crouching medium kick into fireball, focus attack dash cancel into like a full ridiculous combo. So you're going to want to hit confirm this so that if the opponent blocks, you don't just waste your meter for no reason and not get any damage off it. So hit confirm means basically you wait and you see confirm. Did it hit? And if it hit, you're going to finish your combo. But if they blocked it, you're not going to finish your combo. You're going to do something else. So if it was blocked, Daigo probably would have just done, you know, crouching medium kick into fireball and that's it. Another example could be like if you want to do like this evil Ryu combo, light kick, light punch, medium punch into hurricane kick. If the opponent blocks this, 
you're not really happy because you're probably going to be punishable. You're going to land right in front of them and, you know, eat a big punish and not get any damage. So you can make sure that it's actually going to hit. A good way to practice this in training mode, set the dummy to random guard. I see a lot of people have never used the random guard feature. It's super important. You know, you can see I'm checking. There, it hits, so I'll finish the combo. And the same thing with this, you know, like if this hits, I'm only going to do the FADC like that. So yeah, you only want to spend the meter and you only want to do something that might leave you unsafe on block if it's actually going to hit. So practicing hit confirming, I think, is one of the most important things that you can do when you're picking up a new fighting game. Learn your character's combos and learn what combos you can hit confirm into. All right, so he got the very nice FADC hit confirm there. Now he's got the knockdown. He's pressing at his advantage. And for the first time this set, we see high-low mix-up. Guys, that's a fundamental, of course. So we've already seen lots of throw mix-ups, you know, going for, like, tick throws and stuff like that. Or, like, empty jump throw. You know, throw is a really, really good way to mix up. But in fighting games, there's also high-low mix-ups because, you know, there's standing block and crouching block. So there are certain moves that can only be blocked standing. So generally in Street Fighter, it's rare to get a combo off of an overhead. This is called an overhead, in case you didn't know. A move that can only be blocked standing is called an overhead. It's rare to have combos off of overheads. There's some exceptions like Dudley, but uh, for the most part, overheads are just going to be like a little bit of damage, just one attack's worth of damage. But this is kind of like free damage for Daigo because, you know, obviously Crouching Medium Kick is such a threat. He gets such massive damage off Crouching Medium Kick that Sian in this match is going to be blocking low the entire time. So, uh, yeah, overheads like this can be a great way to eke out extra damage and meter build and make the opponent think twice about what to do on defense. So don't neglect the power of a high-low mix-up. All right, we're, we're at, if my count is correct, we're at 13 fundamentals so far. But I think before we get to the end here, I think we can even find one more. So I'll keep pointing everything out. We got poking, we got footsies. Ooh, okay, we got pressing the advantage here in the corner. We got reversal to get out there with the invincible dragon punch. We got throws. Okay, not a tick throw, but a throw tech. We got whiff punishing again. There's a tick throw off the jump in. Now he's got the knockdown in the corner. Nice throw tech from Cian. And here we see another, the last on our list today of fundamentals is the bait and punish. So of course we talked about the power of reversals. You know, if the opponent's got you knocked down, they're pressuring you while you're waking up or just pressuring you on block as well. An invincible reversal will get you out of the situation and get you the turn back so that you can be the one pressing your advantage all of a sudden. But the one big downside, of course, is that you can be baited and punished because pretty much every invincible reversal is going to be unsafe on block in most games. So, you know, like that EX up kicks we saw earlier, you can just get a huge full punish if you block that. Or like we saw Daigo do, you can be even more disrespectful with it and you can use your own invincible move to go right through oh and th in this situation we actually oh there we go okay yeah we beat him clean yeah so you know whoever does the invincible move second is generally gonna win but it can be a little risky to go for that so most moves that are punishable on block it is gonna be safer to just block and punish that way so yeah baiting an attack baiting them to do something and then waiting for it so that you can punish it Super important skill, once again, especially at low levels, people are doing lots of unsafe stuff, so you're gonna wanna have your punishes on deck. All right, so with that, I've, I've counted up a total of 14 pieces of knowledge in one <laughs> match, man. This is crazy. I absolutely love watching these players go at it. Two of my favorites, Daigo and Cian. And once again, I'll link the full match in the description if you want to watch it. It's like a 30 minute video. So there's a lot to enjoy here. So make sure to check that out. And I hope you guys enjoyed this little breakdown. Let me know if there's other types of breakdowns or other types of fighting game fundamentals that you're curious about and want to learn more about. Hit me up in the comments and I will maybe make a future video about it. So let me know about that. And I hope you guys enjoyed. I'll see you in the next one. Bye everybody.